Hi everyone, welcome to our fourth video in our series on graph theory, which focuses on Hamiltonian circuits and the vacation planning problem, which is also sometimes called the traveling salesman problem. So for a quick recap, a tour that starts at a vertex and visits each vertex once and only once, returning to where it started, is called a Hamiltonian circuit. And you see one on the graph here. So for example, maybe we could say that we start at vertex A, we then travel to vertex B, D, G, I, H, F, E, C, and then back home to A. So we visit each vertex of our graph exactly once, and start and stop at the same vertex. That is called a Hamiltonian circuit. And our goal often is to find an efficient route along distinct edges of a graph that visits each of these vertex only once in a simple circuit. Think, for example, if you are a delivery person and the vertices represent the homes for which you need to drop off food or, or flowers or whatever it is that you're delivering, right? You do not need to travel along each edge, along each possible road. You just need to hit each one of these locations and then return back to your store. And you want to be as efficient as possible in the way that you do this. Now we saw in our previous video that not every graph has a Hamiltonian circuit and that Hamiltonian circuits are not easy to determine upon inspection. Our focus of this video is something called the vacation planning problem or the traveling salesman problem. So suppose that it's spring break and you want to take a road trip leaving from your home in Chicago and visiting friends in Cleveland, St. Louis, and Minneapolis. Our goal is to decide on the route that will minimize the distance that you must travel and therefore minimize the amount of time it's going to take you and the cost of gas. So what we want to find here is a Hamiltonian circuit on a graph with weighted edges. So the edges of the graph are given a number, a weight. For example, we see that the edge from Minneapolis to Cleveland has been given a weight of 774. And so these weights can stand for mileage or distance between cities or even the amount of time it takes to get from one space to another. But as we travel from vertex to vertex, what we're going to want to do is we're going to add those numbers and see that each Hamiltonian circuit is going to produce a particular sum. So some quick vocabulary for us. The weight is just the number assigned to an edge of a graph that can be thought of as a cost, a distance, or a time associated with traveling along that edge. And the minimum cost Hamiltonian circuit is a Hamiltonian circuit in a graph with weights on the edges for which the sum of the weights of the edges of the Hamiltonian circuit is as small as possible. So if we think about going on our vacation or being a traveling salesman, right, we want to travel the smallest distance possible or take the minimum amount of time possible. And an algorithm is just a step-by-step -step description of how we're going to solve that problem. So here is an algorithm for finding a minimum cost Hamiltonian circuit. We start by generating all possible Hamiltonian tours, and in this example we're going to assume we start at Chicago. We're going to add up the distances on the edges of each one of those tours, and then simply choose the tour with minimum distance. So here's how it works. Here's our graph. We're starting at Chicago. So from Chicago, we can either travel first to Minneapolis, to St. Louis or to Cleveland. And so we're gonna draw a graph that represents this. Starting from Chicago, we have three choices. We may go to Minneapolis, to St. Louis, or to Cleveland. Let's focus first on that Minneapolis option. If we travel first to Minneapolis, then we may next choose to travel to St. Louis. If we do so, and we wanna visit every single vertex before returning home, then we have no choice from St. Louis. We have to go to Cleveland and then back home to Chicago. But if we go first to Minneapolis, we may also decide that we want to go next to Cleveland. If we do so, we would then have to travel to St. Louis and then back home to Chicago. And so those are all the possible routes we can take starting at Chicago and visiting Minneapolis first. Okay, what if instead we decide to travel to St. Louis first. From St. Louis, we may choose to next go to Minneapolis, then we would have to go to Cleveland, 
before returning home to Chicago. Or from St. Louis, we can go to Cleveland. Then we have to go to Minneapolis before returning home to Chicago. And those are the two possibilities going from Chicago to St. Louis first. Finally, what if we start at Chicago and go first to Cleveland? Well, from Cleveland, we could then go to Minneapolis, to St. Louis, back to Chicago, or from Cleveland to St. Louis, to Minneapolis, to Chicago. Okay, so here is our list of all possible routes we could take starting and ending at Chicago and visiting every city that we'd like, Minneapolis, St. Louis, and Cleveland. On this graph that's called a tree, on this graph we're gonna then add in all of the weights. So for example, you see the distance from Chicago to Minneapolis on our graph is 425, so we mark that edge as 425. From Chicago to St. Louis, the distance is 300. From Chicago to Cleveland, the distance is 349. And we continue adding those weights to every single little edge of our tree. Now we simply add all of those values to get the distance of each route. For example, our first route from Chicago to Minneapolis to St. Louis to Cleveland to Chicago. Adding all of those distances together, we see that that total trip would be a distance of 1,877 miles. Next, from Chicago to Minneapolis to Cleveland to St. Louis to Chicago, adding, we get a distance of 2040. We continue this for each one of the branches of our tree, for each possible route. And now we just simply pick the smallest. So we see that the minimum cost Hamiltonian circuit in this graph would be to travel from Chicago to Minneapolis to St. Louis to Cleveland back to Chicago. And that would be a total distance of 1,877 miles. Notice the distance is the same if we follow that same route but going backwards. So going Chicago, Cleveland, St. Louis, Minneapolis, Chicago. So the distance is the same, right, whether we go forward or backwards. All right, so there is our answer. Here again to recap are the three possible routes that we found and their lengths. Now this method is called the method of trees algorithm or the brute force method. It's a systematic approach needed to generate all possible Hamiltonian tours where we disregard the distances initially. We select a starting vertex, in our example, Chicago, and make a tree diagram showing the next possible locations. At each stage, note that there was one less choice for us to make. And in this example, the method generated six different circuits, all starting and ending with Chicago. And we saw that each route was actually listed twice because we got the same distance going forward or backward. So while there were six different circuits, only three of them were actually unique. Here's an example for you to try. The table shows the mileage between four cities, Springfield, Urbana, Effingham, and Indianapolis. So represent this information by drawing a weighted complete graph on four vertices. Use that weighted graph to find the cost of the three distinct Hamiltonian circuits in the graph, and you can list them starting at U, which circuit gives the minimum cost? And then would there be any difference in parts B and C if the starting vertex were I instead? I encourage you to pause the video and practice this example before I reveal the answer. Okay, so starting with, here is what a possible weighted graph might look like and what our method of trees diagram is going to look like with the total distances produced. So then we see that the minimum cost route is UIESU -E with a cost of 446. And no, there would be no difference in the cost of routes if we were to start at a different vertex, right? 
the total distance of each route doesn't matter what your actual starting and ending point is. So up next is something called the fundamental principle of counting, which says, if there are A ways of choosing one thing, B ways of choosing a second after the first is chosen, C ways of choosing a third after the second is chosen, and so on, and Z ways of choosing the last item after the earlier choices, then the total number of choice patterns is A times B times C all the way down times Z. Let's do some examples of that. If Jack has nine shirts and four pairs of pants, how many shirt pant outfits does he have? Well, he has nine shirts and four pairs of pants. So nine times four tells us he has 36 total outfit choices. Here's another example. If five cards are dealt from a standard deck of 52, how many possibilities are there? Well, there are 52 ways to choose your first card, 51 ways to choose the next, 50 ways to choose the third, 49 ways to choose the fourth, and 48 ways to choose the fifth for a total of 311,875,200 possible choices. Now, before we go farther, we need a weird mathematical thing called n factorial. So if n is a natural number, these are our counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth. n factorial, which is denoted n with an exclamation mark, is defined to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. And we define 0 factorial to just be 1. So for example, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or 120. 7 factorial, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or 1040. All right, now what in the world does this have to do with graph theory and our vacation planning problem? Great question. So let's apply the principle of counting for Hamiltonian circuits. A graph in which every pair of vertices is joined by an edge is called a complete graph. So the graph we've been working on for our vacation planning problem is a complete graph on four vertices. Every single vertex of our graph is connected by an edge. Here's an example of a complete graph on five vertices. Again, Every pair of vertices is joined by an edge. These are what we call complete graphs. And here's what the principle of counting tells us for our Hamiltonian circuits. For a complete graph of n vertices, there are n minus 1 factorial possible roots. Why? Well, we assume that we're not allowed to pick our starting city because we live where we live. But once we know where we're starting, from that starting city, there are n minus 1 choices for where we'll go first. Then there are n minus 2 choices for where we'll go next, so on and so forth. So what we end up with is a factorial. Now, as we saw in our example, half of these roots are repeats. And so the number of possible unique Hamiltonian circuits will be n minus 1 factorial divided by 2. For example, how many possible roots are there for this complete graph with five vertices? Well, n minus 1 factorial would be 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or 24 possible routes. But keep in mind that every route has been counted twice. So how many possible unique Hamiltonian circuits are there? Well, we need to divide by 2. So 24 divided by 2 tells us that there are 12 unique Hamiltonian circuits. Now, this is just a graph with five vertices. Five's not that big of a number, but still, in order to use this method of trees, we would have to check 12 different routes. That's going to take a lot of work. So if all of these factorials and principle of counting has your head spinning, Take a deep breath. Here's what I want you to take away from that. 
The method of trees or the brute force method is great in theory because you get to see every possible route and pick the very best answer, the absolute minimum cost Hamiltonian circuit. But for graphs with a lot of vertices, even just five, there are often too many possible routes for this method to be worthwhile. A computer program can find an optimal route without being quite as time consuming, but what if we don't have one of those available to us? Instead, we're gonna take a heuristic method. We're gonna find a fast answer that's not guaranteed to always be the optimal answer. And so what we're gonna do in our next video is to learn two algorithms for helping us find a good answer, even if it's not the best answer. And I'll see you there. Thanks, guys. Bye.